Hi everybody, we're high atop the press box here at Satterton High School, Norristown Eagles football. I'm Steve Acovino, back with my colleague Dave Fazzini. It's really windy here tonight. Norristown is coming off a big homecoming win. How do they keep that momentum going into tonight, Dave? Well, Steve, first of all, they have to hope that kicking, the kicking game, does not become a factor. If the kicking game becomes a factor tonight, we are standing here and the wind is a whipping. Where did you say that wind is coming out of? Well, the wind's coming out of the southwest right now. The southwest. Wind's coming out of the southwest right now. It's really windy, and we're up here at the press box. We're giving you some view and giving you some idea of our vantage point tonight. And the vantage point tonight for the Norristown Eagles is that they're currently ninth in the playoff rankings, and they look up and they see Soderton right before them. So Soderton tonight, the most formidable opponent the Eagles have faced. This is, I don't want to say it's a must win, but it would really help the Norristown Eagles if they could come out with a victory tonight. Well, Soderton is 6-1, six 6-0 and six and oh in the league. It's going to be a tough battle for Norristown tonight. So stick around on the Norristown uh, Eagles Varsity Football Network, NASD TV 27. We'll be back with the start of the game after this. Hi, folks. Welcome back to Center, Pennsylvania. I'm Steve Ivey, along with my colleague Dave Fazzini. Hey, Mr. Fazzini, man, is the nice to be in the press box out of the elements. It's really nice to be out of the press box, out in the press box, Steve. Um, the elements are fierce tonight. Huge gusty winds, um, as gusty as the violent beatdowns Southerton has been administering to their opponents. These are not just victories they're racking up. They've been outscoring their opponents by a 4 to 1 ratio and they have been administering back alley beatdowns. To wit, a 31 to 13 pasting of Springford, a 56 to 7 embarrassment of the Central Bucks West, a team that used to be but is no longer good. A 37 to 7 destruction of Council Rock South, a 41 to 10 demolishment of Council Rock North, and last week, 35 to nothing victory against the Hatboro Worsham Hatters. Steve, this is going to be a tough game for Norristown. Well, it's going to be a big test of the defense, and as we mentioned on our way up here, it's we, we can't leave the defense on the field tonight. They will be tested this evening, and we can't have them worn out early. Steve, if last week's game is any, any indication, Norristown is ready to win some defensive struggles. Norristown is ready to win some games 16-9 to nine, like they won last week, but I don't see any way that they're going to win a low-scoring game tonight. I think tonight that they're going to have to open it up because Soderton puts points on the board and they destroy teams and embarrass them. So I think tonight it might be a high-scoring game. And the graham Denalfi connection tonight is really going to have to come out in full force if Norristown's going to win this game. Well, the graham Denalfi connection has looked really good in the beginning of this season and throughout the season. If they continue tonight and just focus on all the plays at, at hand, they'll be fine. Let's not get ahead of ourselves tonight and take it one quarter at a time, one down at a time. And I, I fully understand that, Steve, and I think you're exactly 100% right. It's just that Norristown, you know, watching game films of Soderton and watching the way that this team has been playing, they've got to be very conscious of the fact that Soderton really has an explosive offense. Their leading rusher is their fullback, Joe Clark McCarrow. He's been he rushed for 506 yards. He averages 7.3 yards per carry, as long as 55, and his yards per game, 72.3 yards per game. They can put up some yards on the ground. They're putting the yards up through the air very well, very, doing very well this year on offense. Well, Norristown is taking the field now, and there are away whites. The Norristown, like I said before, is coming off a 16-9 victory against Council Rock North. Tonight they're playing Soderton. Next week it's 7 o'clock p.m. versus Hatboro Horsham. And then uh, the following week after that they're against Central Bucks West. And then concluding the season on uh, the 9th of November against PW. Nice crowd here tonight, Steve. Very nice crowd for the, for the homecoming. Uh, let's go talk a little bit about the... Uh, the win factor tonight definitely is going to play a big factor in field goal uh, kicking. Definitely 
as the wind is coming from the southwest and it's picking up it should be between 15 to 25 miles an hour with possibly stronger gusts at times so that will definitely be a factor tonight well we'll see steve we have the big production here we have the halftime the uh the homecoming production here a lot of good things going on tonight here at Southerton. the community really seems to have turned out in support of this team nice crowd crowd up here in the booth too it is it's very as you mentioned earlier cozy up here and uh, it's going to be neat seeing at least two homecomings here we saw Norristown's last week at, at home and now we're coming to see Southerton's. so we get a little different uh venue a little bit of a different venue a little bit of a different field um yeah last week we were in the friendly confines of historic roosevelt field this week we're out here at the stadium for the Soderton Soderton indians and we're going to see exactly what goes down and the way they like to throw a party here out in Soderton. so it's great to be here they've been very hospitable we have a very very nice very cozy feel up here in the booth and you know as a uh, sister sledge says uh, we are family and all that good stuff Their banner says, Execute the Eagles. That's <laughs> I've never quite seen anything like that. That's Execute. interesting. Well, That's interesting. Let, me, let me tell you this, Steve. <laughs> Soderton's been racking up some impressive victories, and I, I guess they transcend victories, and they are executions. All right, so. So Matt Booker and Pete Nguyen are the captains for the Norristown Eagles. Meanwhile, for the Soderton Indians, captains are number 88, Mike Bergen, number 52, Nicholas Hecht, number 14, quarterback Mike Franklin, and number 56. John Dimmick. Franklin's had a very successful season so far, and he's been doing very well, holding it down through the air. Franklin has a 47% completion rating, 511 yards, four touchdowns, three interceptions. His quarterback rating is 58, and he's thrown for 73 yards per game. Captains meet at midfield as Nguyen and Booker shake hands with the cadre of Soderton Indians. And we're gonna get this game underway in a hurry. Now, the last couple games, Steve, the referees have had a, a real difficult time figuring out the coin toss. We'll see if tonight this is replicated. The confusion of the last few weeks is replicated by tonight's officiating crew. Nope, the coin seems to go up with no problems and it seems to come down with no problems. Mm, it's amazing. Gravity works wonders. Really does work wonders, Steve. It's amazing. Newton explained it so clearly and so well, and yet the last few weeks, officiating crews have seemed to have trouble with it. Now the is going to receive, Steve, so we're going to see this high-powered explosive offense right away. All right, we're going to pause for the national anthem. What? 
A beautiful rendition of the national anthem sung in very nice four-part harmony. That should get tonight's football game off to a very nice start. Exceptional harmonies. Very good job by Soderton's band. So tonight's game, you know, this is any indication. The musical proficiency is any indication. We're in for a gridiron treat here this evening. Beautiful weather, gusty winds, old-timey her football heroics. That's the way I think uh, football is meant to be played, especially in the elements. That's what makes it really exciting when you have conditions like this, especially at game time. Right now the sun's setting, and thank goodness for my corneas it's thank setting. <laughs> thank goodness for your corneas indeed, Steve, because they're a reflective glare off of the, off of the uh, less than UV gray certified glass here. Kind of kind of toasting us. <laughs> well, for, for, I'm glad that Satterton's jerseys are red and that my eyes just aren't that bad at this right. point. All right, uh, let's see, Norristown will be kicking off, and as you mentioned, Souderton will be receiving, and we'll get a glimpse of this high-powered offense very quickly here. All right, 12 minutes on the clock. We're ready to begin the first quarter. The Shally and Shally gang back for Souderton as Pizza is ready to kick off for Norristown. All right, here comes the return. Out across the 20, 25, still moving, taken down at about the 30-yard line. So Sholly gets out to about the 31. A couple missed tackles on that, Steve, already. So hopefully this is no uh, no indication of the way the rest of this game is going to go. Norristown can't afford a missed tackle. Soderton's good enough without giving them any Christmas or Yuletide gifts. Okay, the... Mike Franklin is the starting quarterback for Satterton. Here's the snap. Fumble. Let's see. Norristown has it. Yes, and they do. All right. Norristown gets the fumble right away. Nice job. Recovered by 65. That's Marcus Robbins. He was mad last week because we... Uh, he says we called him Marcus Baskin Robbins, and he says, what does that mean, I'm soft? Marcus, we didn't call you that. Check the videotape, sir. Good play, incidentally, on first drive there. Russell Graham and gang takes over. Russell Graham hands off to Booker. Booker will get down to the 25. Nice game by Matt Booker, you know. Booker, he's a great kid. He's been playing some good football this year, good solid football. And, Hopefully we continue and get some good productive gains from him. He's averaging about 100 yards a game. So if Booker continues this up, Norristown will be in good shape. All right. Graham. In trouble. He decides to take it. And he'll be taken out about the 24-yard line. Graham is very athletic, and he can get outside of contain. And he can break contain. He can keep Soderton guessing there on the end. So if they don't contain Graham, they're going to be in for a long, long day. But it's still going to be third and four for Norristown here with 10.52 left to go here in the first quarter. All right, Graham, here's the snap. Tulsa's it back to Booker. Here comes Booker. 
Well, nothing there for Booker and nowhere to go on that play. What a defensive end has to do there, Steve, is his defensive end has to keep contained, keep pinching it inside, not letting anything get back outside of him. That's exactly what happened there. Soderton's good play, and they're showing that fierce defense that's held their opponents to only 61 points this entire season. All right, that's 10 minutes, 14 seconds in the first quarter, and ticking down, Norristown gave up a pretty good opportunity there. This really is this really is an unbelievable statistic, 245 to 61. You're thinking about that, you can really get disheartened in a hurry. Well, this is interesting here. Norristown, Norristown's going to go for it. Let's see. Graham has it. Graham goes for the pass. He's connecting. To Denolfi, he catches it. Does he touch down Denolfi? Wow, I can't believe it. Graham to Denolfi, the combo continues. The fearsome combination of Russell Graham to Alex Denolfi, the howitzer esque arm of Russell Graham, and the gridiron grit of Alex Denolfi hey, combined once we, again for a touchdown for the Eagles. We talk a lot about it, and when it comes true, it's so sweet. Okay. We've been mentioning the proficiency of the Graham to Denalfi connection for the last few weeks, and tonight they strike quickly with 9.43 left to go here in the first. Darstown takes the lead. All right. Kink is up. It's good. So 9.43 now in the first quarter, and Arstown leads it 7 nothing over Sounderton, and boy, that's a way to get some confidence right off the bat. That is the way to get some confidence. A 30-yard hookup from Graham. To Denalfi. And we talked about this a lot, Steve, and we talked about this before, the, the toughness of Alex Denalfi and his ability, even though, well, he is a fa he does have a lot of speed, but even though he's not the most blazing track star on the field, he always is open. And he always gets open, and he always fight off the defender for the ball. And he can, when he gets it, when he's open, it's a touchdown. All right, well, Narsen has to be feeling good right now. Now they'll kick off once again. It's time for, it's time for Norristown's defense to take over again, and they can keep getting these turnovers. Everything's going to work out well for Norristown, but Soderton's offense is nothing to be trifled with, so Norristown can't get, can't get into a shootout here. Sholly and Sholly back to receive the kick from Pizzo. All right, here's the kick from Pizzo. It's up. Here comes deep the return. Kick. Very deep kick. And he is wrapped up at about the 20-yard line. About the 20-yard line. Ellis nice on the tackle, good, good coverage by the Norristown Eagles, backing them up the 20-yard line. So they'll be starting from the 20, and they'll bring it out, and we'll see what the Soderton offense can do. What Norristown has to be conscious of is giving up too many yards on the ground. That's been the Achilles heel of the Norristown Eagles defense, is giving up yards off tackle. They've been, ab they've been abused off tackle all year. So if Soderton can run it on him, it could be pretty tough for Norris down this evening. Here's the handoff. Okay, Kremarenko gets out for Soderton to about the 28-yard line. Yeah, not, even, not even going off tackle there, Steve. It's a nice fullback dive. Not trying to fool anyone, just right up the gut. He's their leading rusher this year, Kremenko, so... They're going to go with him, and they're going to see what happens. Second down and uh, one. Nine minutes, three seconds now in the first quarter. Second down and two. All right, Franklin rolls. He's going for the pass. And he, ooh, it's just tipped and it's picked off. The other way, Norristown gets it. And Ellis is finally brought down. Another pickoff. Two drives, two turnovers. 
Soderton's coaches have to, have to be having apoplectic fits right about now. This is not, I'm sure this is not what they envisioned. This the first is, two drives of their series against Norris down going line. That, this is just playing out. I can't believe it. Right now with 8 minutes 38 seconds, Norristown gets the ball right back and then they're in good field position. This is great field position. It could return by Ellis. You see the way quickly, how quickly Norristown transitioned from defense to offense there, setting up that return. Big return by Ellis. So, all right, back to Graham. Graham's going with the long ball again. He's feeding it outside, and it is caught. Let's see, but they're going to say it's no catch out of bounds. Very close, but it's a good. Looks like a good call. Looks like he was out of bounds. Looks like his left foot was out of bounds before he made the catch. So a good call by the officials there. But again, that big arm by Russell Graham. If you've got it deep, take it deep, man. Take it all day. He's certainly capable of it now. 8:31 in the first quarter. So they'll bring up second down and 10. Ball's on the 39-yard line. Souderton. All right, play action. Graham decides to run, and he's taken right down. Matt Booker is a beast. I don't think I need to say anything else, and I don't think I will. All 208 pounds of Matt Booker. Pounds. Okay, <laughs> that's right. He, it's whatever a locomotive, nonetheless. I know that I'm going to hear about it from Matt anyway, so I could say whatever I want at this point. <laughs> It's going to be third and two for Norris down 825 here and left to go in the first quarter. Good pitch by Russell Graham holding it at the last, it's the last possible second. All right, Graham hands off again to book, uh, let's see, 21. Hand off to Ron Davis and he is stopped cold. Let's see where they spot this one, Steve. They're going to measure this. I know I've mentioned this before, but every band does this like rock and roll part two to Gary Glitter song. And they, they, it's a real throwback to the days of kind of glittery spandex pants. Hey, you never know. Things can come back, back in style. I, well, Gary Glitter's had his share of legal problems, and really, like, bizarre legal problems, too. Um, so, I guess them playing his song is not a referendum on Gary Glitter's career. It's just a good song, good, like, sports song. It's in those arena rock albums you hear so much about on television. All right, eight minutes, five seconds in the first quarter. It's fourth down and one. Let's see, and looks like he got it. Yeah, he got it. That quarterback sneak works, you know, 19 times out of every 20 or 99 times out of every 100. It takes a real staunch defense to stop that. All right, so Norristown will be working on a fresh set of downs. First and 10 on the Sarton 27. All right, backs in the eye. There's Graham. Play action. Let's see, Graham's in trouble. Pitch back, given to Booker, but they read that play all the way. Yeah, it's going to be a loss, short loss on that play. You have to be real careful with the option. Soderton looks like they have some speed on the end, and if you have speedy ends that are good at keeping contained, you're really not going to be able to run that option very effectively. Norristown got away with it a few times before, but I don't think that the option is going to be, if they're going to win the night, I don't think the option is going to be the vehicle that gets them there. All right, we're coming up on the seven-minute mark here in the first quarter. Second down and 12 now for Norristown. So a bit of work cut out for them. They're liking that shotgun formation tonight, Steve. All right. Back. Snap, Graham goes with the pass. That one's caught by 25, touchdown, and 25 would be Sheldon Mayer. Wow. Graham to Mayer, and Graham is lighting it up like a Christmas tree, a Rockefeller Center, and 
Russell Graham is getting it on tonight. All right, nice pass there by Russell Graham. That's touchdown there connected with Sheldon Mayer. So it's 6.38 now. It's 13 nothing Norristown. And could be 14 nothing pending the extra point. Is up, and it's good. So he's now he's showing some, showing some leg out there. I mean, he's been, Norristown. The kicking game has been suspect for Norristown, but it looks like if it comes down to some field goal type positions tonight, Pizzo can make them. Well, we talked about earlier uh, that um, Norristown has gone through its share of kickers this year already due to uh, injury. All right. So with 6:38 on the board, Norristown is. Up 14 nothing over Souderton. Now, if you're... Steve, you know, sorry, Steve, but I don't know that anybody would have expected that it would have gone like this so far tonight. The vaunted Souderton offense and defense on, on both sides of the ball being, you know, on the receiving end of Norristown's own special version of the uh, beatdown. It's the 14 nothing, and, you know, the game is still very, very young. Right. But... Zodderton, two, two series of downs, two turnovers. I don't know. I don't know, Steve. Well, we still have about six and a, uh, excuse me, three and a half quarters to play, so anything still can show up here. And um, right now, if you're you're Sounderton and the coaching staff, what what are you thinking right now? What are you planning to do now on this I drive? I run the ball up the middle every play. All right. Here's the kickoff. Here comes the return the other way. Breaks through about the 30, finally taken down just about over the 35 yard line. Good return by number 81, Sholly, after a series of devastating blocks. And they were just, they were just some humiliating and devastating blocks thrown out there, so nice return. All right, they placed the ball on the 35. So it's at their own 35-yard line. All right, Franklin hands off. And finally, not too much gain on that. Interesting play call there, Steve. It's, you know, it's a short pickup, but it's going to keep Norristown guessing. Norristown likes to flip-flop and stunt their defensive linemen, so it's going to be up to Soderton to do some misdirection to kind of throw them off their game. All right, six minutes, six seconds here in the first quarter. All is on the Soderton 38. Second down and seven. Franklin hands off and once again. It's number nine, Eric Bruni. Roby cuts him down after a gain of eight, but it was an arm tackle, so it was a good gain. Good game for Bruni that first on second down there. And now Soderton is going to have it at their own 48, first 10. Play action, Franklin rolling, rolling, still going. He'll decide to run, and it finally tackled there. And that looks like by Matt Booker. Franklin, and probably rightly so, this appears to be a little bit gun-shy. There was nobody open there. Good coverage by the Eagles. Um, and when you try to force it into coverage, it gets picked off. So probably a little gun shy. All right, five minutes, 13 seconds. Clock is stopped in the first quarter. Second down and 11 for Souderton. Here goes Franklin. Whole hand off once again. Now out to about the. 20, about the 48-yard line of Norristown, should I say. Tackle there by Booker. Good play by Matt Booker. A double threat. Not only is he the expert tailback, but he's also a fearsome member of the Eagles' hard-hitting secondary. And an old-timey, you know, 
he would not be out of place in the era of the leather helmet and the no face mask. He's just a Jim Thorpe kind of guy. Fumble, but finally picked up. And a fumble again, let's see. Ruled down. Looks like there were two fumbles on that play, Steve, and a whole lot of confusion. A few years ago, actually many, many years ago, Phil Collins, when he was the lead singer for Genesis, he had a song called Land of Confusion. The band Disturbed recently covered that song, and this appears like this is what it is. You know, this is the land we live in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And these are the hands we're given. I mean, here's the punt. Nothing like a Genesis reference to liven up the crowd. I want to mention that Sheldon Mayer was back for North Sound. Punt Great punt. punt. Punt goes out about the market at the 11th yard line. It's 3.49 to go in the first quarter. Steve Acovino along with Dave Vizzini. North Sound is up 14-0 over the Sanderton Indians. And I have to tell you, it's been a pretty interesting first quarter. Oh, very interesting first quarter. In addition to the Genesis reference, we've also had a few turnovers that have led to 14 Norris Town points. And if you're watching here at home on www.nasd.k12.pa.us or Comcast Channel 27, you're watching an interesting game here this evening as we see our Norris Town Eagles play and it's kind of defy the prognostications of the pundits. Graham hands off. One of the middle tackled. Let's see, that's handed off to number Booker. Matt Booker again. Well, again, it's interesting now that, that to see they're going to probably give Booker some, some running room here and uh, let him open up a little bit. When I was talking to some members of the offensive line this week, they said, you know, everybody keeps talking about how small we are, but we're a fearsome crew who plays much bigger than we are. So it's kind of like a little cryptic riddle mixed with a threat, I think. Second down and nine. Let's see, Graham's back. He goes for the pass. He's going deep once again, and that falls way over the head of Brandon Ellis. That pass was intended for, for Ellis. He had Ellis, but Ellis was well covered. And even though Brandon Ellis has what many would categorize as blazing speed, it's very difficult when you throw in a double coverage like that to be able to hit your man and fully be able to see where you're going. But Graham, again, shows that cannon arm, and he really does have it. All right, three minutes, one second to go in the first quarter. It brings up third down in Tequila. nine. I thought this was supposed to be a dry broadcast. It, 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 it is, is but... Graham from the gun again. All right. Here goes Graham running, passes, and it looks like, oh, it was just bobbled by Anthony Roby. It was in Roby's hands, Steve. He just couldn't hang on. Maybe instead of tequila, they should have been playing hot, 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 because that pass was thrown in accordance with Buster Poindexter's wishes right there, my man. It was hot, hot, hot. And Graham showing that arm again once more. He should have completed that one, though. We're going to add record producer to your title, as long with English teacher and sports commentator. English teacher, Why not? sportscaster, record producer. You got it all. You got it all covered here. Renaissance man. Dave Renaissance Dave. man. All right. Here we go with the punt. That one's a high punt. Not very good. Bounces. That was nice. Well, that wasn't such a good punt, so it looks like Sounderton really has good field position now. Really good field this position. This is exceptional field position, Steve, and if Sounderton doesn't capitalize on this, there's going to be trouble. Because Sounderton is going to take over here at the 28 yard line. There's no reason for them not to be able to get this high-powered offense into the end zone on this series of downs. Unless the Eagles can come up with another miracle and get another turnover. It's going to be tough. The Eagles offense didn't do them any favors on that series of downs. Now the defense is backed up and they have to save the day. All right. Here we go, play action. Hands it off. Franklin hands off. 
Still going with the ball, finally tackled. That's number 24, Derek Brown, the 5'11 sophomore. Yeah, good run by Brown, who on the season, Brown has 21 carries for 192 for 9.14 yards per carry. So he's been like their uh, good average man. He's picking up nine yards a carry. He picks up another 10 or 11 there. Eagles defense is not looking like they have any cure for that. All right, two minutes, 19 seconds now in the first quarter. Ball on the Norristown 13. Flag there, and... Looks like that one's coming back, Steve. It is. And How many of those penalties have we seen in the last four weeks? We've seen so many illegal shift penalties. I guess it has to, I guess it needs, the coaches need to take more time explaining their players exactly what you need to do and where you need to be set because it's happened with Norristown, it's happened with Council Rock North, it's happened in the South game, it's happened in the CB East game, it's happened with all of these games. We've seen so many illegal shifts and so many people moving and illegal procedure penalties that some of the responsibility at least has to fall on the coaches. You have to tell you what your players what you can and can't do before the whistle. Well, it all comes down to the, the breakdown in communication that gets somehow scrambled and you get penalties like that. All right, Franklin hands off here. Still on his feet. That's outside. That's Justin Powell. Justin Powell, we see him back now. Ellis makes the tackle on that play. He gets outside and he's able to get it done. All right, so second down. 11 here with 130 left to go in the first quarter. Norris down still up, 14 nothing. but Soderton is on the move. Off again, and here Kramarenko. Let's see where he is. That quick dive play right there. If I was Soderton, I would never put the ball in the air, I would just run that dive every play. Who cares if they know it's coming? Joe Gibbs once had an interesting quote, and he's, when he's talking about the counter tray that he used to run all the time, he said, I don't care if they know it was coming, they still can't stop it. And that's the hallmark of a great coach and a good team. The touchdown there for Souderton, and they finally strike right back. Why get cute? Right. So at 28.6 seconds, uh, Souderton, excuse me, puts six points on the board. Here seems to be a simple equation. Ready? Ready, Steve? When Soderton runs the ball, they score touchdowns, and when they throw it, it gets picked off. I don't think we'll be seeing too many more, <laughs> too many more passes from this offense so, of Souderton. I think they've seen what's going to work tonight and what isn't going to work. And uh, it's interesting to see they move the ball very well down the field. Well, I shouldn't say they didn't have to go that far. To, no. <laughs> so really, in a sense, they... They move the ball into the end zone, and now it's 14 to 7 now after the extra points of Southampton is right back on Norristown's heels. They had a very nice field position, gift wrapped and delivered to them by Norristown. It was like a care package. So, if they didn't score on that play, I would have. If they didn't score on that series of downs, I would have said that they were totally undeserving of all the accolades they've received, not just from us, but from everybody else this year. Because Southampton really has been tearing it up, and the statistics. They don't lie in this case. They're a fierce team, and they're coming back. All right, well, we'll see if Norristown comes out and, and responds big time here. They can really set the tone of this game on this possession. Well, Norristown has been... They've been running a lot of them back this year. So with the speedy triumvirate 
of Wise, Ellis, and Mayer back there. Okay, the kickoff is up. It's going to Mayer. All right. Let's see. We've got a flag on the play. This, this first quarter has been going relatively quickly. Soddington's offsides, and they're going to re-kick it. They covered that kick well, and it doesn't look like uh, Mayer had too much running room, but they have to re-kick it now. So we'll see. This explosive Norristown return game, you don't want to give them too many chances because they're going to run one back. All right, well, Sean Leo will have to do it again, the 5'7 junior for Soddington. All of these Norristown deep men have blazing speed. Mayer's run one back, Wise's run two back, and Ellis has run one back this year. So all three of the guys in the back are capable of taking it to the proverbial house. So you really don't want to kick it to any of them. The safe bet is to kick it out of bounds and take the penalty. Leo's kicks up. It's going to go to Mayer again. Here comes it's actually wise. Couldn't get the wedge set up there. He only brings it out to the 32. So it was good, good coverage by Soderton on that play. Norriston will take over at their own 32. I think these bands need to have some new songs to the repertoire. Maybe some Janet Jackson. We haven't heard Janet Jackson recently in... Band, like the Rhythm Nation. Like, just think how good that would sound with a good, like, Philip Sousa esque arrangement. It'd be interesting. Good stuff. Good stuff. Graham in the shotgun now. First down. All right. Graham passes, caught by Booker, and he'll take it, and he's brought down at about the 40 yard line, Norristown's 40 yard line. Interesting play there out of the shotgun. They usually don't go to Booker on the short route out of the shotgun, but. They did it there. They did it good success. And with that, that is the end of the first quarter. And speaking about the song arrangement, it would be really bad if they started playing classical music during the football games. Actually, I wouldn't mind that at all. Little, well, you're a big, I'm a big classical right. music guy, Steve. A little uh, Tchaikovsky. Actually, that'd be good. That'd be nice and spirited. Some spirited Tchaikovsky or something like that going on. But Gary Glitter, how many times do we need to hear Gary Glitter? Uh, I'm done with it. I'm calling for a boycott. I'm calling for a ban on Gary Glitter. And I know that that may very well wipe out half the repertoire of high school bands across the country, but I'm calling for an immediate ban on Gary Glitter. Just as last week, I called for an immediate ban on the wide receiver screen. Okay, so we can add now Federal Trade Commission representative now to your repertoire? Things that should be banned. Well, I... Gary Glitter? <laughs> The wide receiver screen. I'm up to two. Steve, I'll tell you what. You know what? I'm not going to tell you. We'll wait until this play happens. All right, Dave Fizzini will hold that thought. 12 minutes on the clock, sort of the second quarter. Here comes Grammy, hands off. That's like one of Russell Graham's alley oops during basketball season. Went up and then bringing it back down. <laughs> I don't think that was designed. All right, 11 minutes, 30 seconds now in the second quarter. Third down and one coming up for Norristown. So it's third and one for Norristown now. Coach Smith has backs in the eye. Hand off there. And first down. They picked it up. They're not even going to measure. They're going to give it to him. He gets the first down. All right. Down. 
Well, if you're just joining us, Steve Alcavino along with Dave Vizzini here on uh, Norristown Varsity Football versus Souderton. We're at Souderton High School. It's their homecoming. Norristown leads at 14 to 7. It is 10.50 to go now in the second quarter. Just heard a little Wilson picket there. High formation. Graham hands off to Booker. Booker is immediately tackled. That play again was doomed from the start. Soderton had great penetration in the backfield, and Norristown had absolutely no blocking, if not less than no blocking. How, how could you have less than no blocking? If it's possible for to have less than no blocking, they had it there. I guess you would need to tackle your own man. Second down and 11. There was a loss of one on that last play. All right, Graham is going with the pass. Long pass. He's going downfield, but this is way over the head of he number 11. Throws good by about 10 yards on that one, Steve. Well, it's good to see that, that Graham can air the ball up at least that much if you ever need it in a situation, but still that little too much power on that. Sometimes you get the sense that Graham does these things just to throw down like a threat, just to show, you know, he can throw that ball 60 yards in the air. But on those longer completions, Graham doesn't complete that many of the huge bombs. Graham is very effective in the 20 to 40 yard range, even though his, far, his range well extends that. He hasn't completed too many of the huge bombs this season. Third and 11 for Graham. In pressure. And that was just all trouble for Russell Graham. Nothing but trouble. Nothing but trouble. So nine minutes, 49 seconds in the second quarter. Norristown will be punting away. Flag thrown, there's the punt. And the punt will settle right at about the 25. That was the silliest thing that I've seen in a long, long time. The substitution at the last possible second. I guess they, they had 10 men on the field and somebody just comes running in. We're gonna see what this penalty actually is, but. That was very Dr. Seussian. Okay. Yeah, very susy in turn of events there. There were people running all over the place, and everything was kind of like a silly, like a little circus. <laughs> Here we come again. We're going to have another punt, it looks like. It's actually right now, as we're looking kind of out of the press box right now, the nice sort of the sun is set and the nice horizon line right now. The winds have died down a little bit. They're still coming from the southwest. With the Limerick nuclear power plant in the in the far and off in the grounds completing the beautiful horizon. <laughs> the Freddie Mitchell-esque fourth and 26, the mythical fourth and 26 now for the North Sand Eagles. Although I don't think... Okay, here's the punt. It's not very long punt and not much hang time and Chris Sholley, again, takes it out back, gets down to about the 36-yard line. And for the second time in a row, Soderton gets a gift on field position. Well, Norristown, Norristown's punts have not been long, and they have not had that much hang time either. No, and they have not had good punt coverage. So completing the three bad things that could possibly happen on punt returns, they've done all of them. They're not that high, not much hang time, and... There's not been that great punt coverage. And Soderton's exploited it all the time. Every single time, Soderton's exploiting it. All right, play action. Hand off to Sholly. Sholly's still going towards the sideline, the far side, and he's finally taken down. 
and see where but they're that, Mark this. That play could have been much, a much bigger yardage, though, if Norristown didn't have so much speed out there in the end. Ellis was able to close in quickly, get the contain going down, and that was not as destructive as it could have been. Charlie well, looked like he was gone, well, but Norristown closed the gap very quickly. 8.57 now to go in the second quarter. Ball on the Norristown's 28. Franklin hands off once again. Kramarenko again is just blazing through the defense. Kramarenko, this like looks like John Riggis out there or Larry Zonka, bowling through people, knocking them down and making them suffer. It looks like the big part of his game is making others suffer, and he's very good at it. Here's the handoff again. Brony again breaks through. Norristown has apparently stopped believing in the concept of the tackle. Well, it's it's unfortunate. I this is a lot different than we've used to seeing the defense playing at this point. This is a bad time to give up one of your core beliefs, namely the belief in tackling people. All right, balls on the. North Town's 15, it's 7.47 to go in the second quarter. <laughs> All right, hand off again to Kremarenko, and he's going to take it right in for the touchdown. Yes, he's in for the touchdown. That's Kramarenko's second touchdown of the night at 7.28, and look out, Norristown. Look out, Norristown. They're, they've seen their 14-0 lead evaporate, erode, what else, whatever else you want to say about it. Just like that, Soderton's high-powered offense has come back into this game, and Norristown's lack of ability to tackle is their Achilles heel this evening so far in the first half. Their tackling stinks. Like a dirty gym bag, right? Like a dirty gym locker. And the extra point is good. It's 14-14, and sadly, we're not seeing a David Copperfield illusion at this point. So no, it this is, is Norristown has got to start working now on offense and give the defense some rest now. When you get off to a 14-0 lead, Steve, and when you get out so quickly, what you have to do is you have to put the pedal to the metal. They know how good Soderton is. It's inexcusable that they would make some of these lapses in judgment and let them come back so quickly. Well, I'm sure they looked at the same stats. They've seen the same things that we've seen from this Souderton team. So they should be, you know, expecting this when they come in. Yeah. I mean, they got a few lucky breaks when they came in, but now it is time to settle down and start playing football. Their 14 nothing lead is just evaporated. It's now a tie game again, and Soderton is the one team with the momentum. Before it was Norristown. It had the momentum. They seized on it. They capitalized on it. They scored 14 quick points, and they let Soderton do the one thing that they could not have let him do is capitalize on momentum. They let the momentum shift, and against this dangerous Soderton team, that's not what you want to do. All right, Leo will kick off for Souderton. All right, and it bounces out of bounds, and we have the flag now, so. Well, I had said before, Steve, that sometimes kicking it out of bounds and taking the penalty is preferable to giving this dangerous Norristown return team any chance to return a kick, but they're going to kick again. This time, Soderton's going to be kicking from their 35. Uh, yep, I believe so. Five, that's a, that'll be a... And Norristown will have another chance to run it back. Ellis Wisen, Mayor. The trifecta. The dangerous triumvirate of Ellis Wisen, Mayor back there. 
all three of them uniquely capable of running it back. Okay, so Leo will give it another shot. Kick is up. It's going to Mayer. All right, here comes Mayer with the return. And he is finally taken down there. Just shy of the 20-yard line, it looks like. That was a heck of a boot right there. Even from the 35, Norristown only takes it out to their own 20-yard line. Very good kick, good coverage by the Indians there. Norristown's got 80 yards to go, and they have to score. They have to score here or at least pin Soderton back. What they can't afford to do is give Soderton another one of those gift-wrapped field position presents. I know this is getting close to the holiday season and all, Steve, but give me a break. Hand off there. Let's see. Here's the run for Booker. And he's finally taken down at about the 35. 15-yard gain by Matt Booker. Good run by Booker. Matt Booker found a seam. It was opened up by the interior of that offensive line with Gallagher and Nguyen contributing for some good blocks. Ran it right up the middle. Good run. Okay. Let's see what they go with here. Here's Graham. He's going to pass. He's going to Mayer. Mayer still on his feet, finally taken down at about the 43. You think they're going to make me reconsider my position on the wide receiver screen? I don't think so. No. I'm not about to reconsider it. I'm just saying. It did work there. I still want to ban. All right, six minutes, 15 seconds now in the first half. Norristown on their own, 42. Here's the handoff again to Booker. Oh, and he goes right back. Matt Booker went backwards, and he paid for it. He paid for it, and then some. He paid for it with interest. It's going to be third down and 10 again for the Norristown Eagles. And that was an ill-advised choice. Do you throw here, Steve, on third and 10? I oh, think you have definitely. To, I think you have to no let question Graham about open it. it up. Maybe not going deep, but one of those middle routes, which Graham is so proficient. All right, third down and 10. From now, they're 35. Here's Graham. Graham's in trouble all the way. He breaks loose. Here comes Russell Graham, and he's taken down at the 40-yard line. If Russell had cut that one outside, he would have picked up the first. But I guess Russ saw a defender coming back in. Russell could have broken that to the outside and picked up the first, but just made the wrong cut. All right, we're now at 4 minutes 57 seconds in the first half. And uh, Norristown will have to punt again. And let's see if they can get this one a little bit further than the previous punt. Let's hope so. Here's the punt. That one's high. Let's see. It'll bounce and finally settle. It takes an Eagles bounce at the 26. 27. So that's... That's much better field position, at least as far as the Norristown Eagles are concerned. So Soderton now is going to have 74 yards to go if they're going to score. But the Eagles have got to clamp down. Better field position, now their defense has got to do something. They've got to tackle. That's true. And and Soderton's have showed that their run game is pretty good. I should say a little bit more than pretty good. It's a really little bit more than pretty, pretty good. good. It's demonstrated their talent tonight. And Norristown is really, like you said, just has to... So up the loose ends here, stop them. They've got to tackle. All right, Franklin hands off once again. Kramarenko. Where's that Brown? That's to Derek Brown, actually. 24. Four-yard gain. That's all you need. 
if you're going to run the ball, you don't, you don't need 20 yards of carry. You need four yards of carry. If you could pick up four yards of carry, I've said this before, if you could pick up four yards every down, you're going to win games 100 to nothing. 3.57 now to go in the first half. 14-14. Ryan Brown breaks through there up the middle, and he's finally taken down, but picking up the first down. That quick dive play, I call that every play until Norristown proves they can stop it. There's no reason to do anything else. The interior of the defensive line has proven themselves incapable or unwilling to stop that dive, and until they show that they can do it, I would run it every single down. Ball is right now at Centerton's 39. So, Centerton takes a timeout. Now, why would Centerton to take a timeout there? Norristown's back on their heels. The running game's going well. Everything's clicking. Seems to be running like a well-oiled machine. I just don't know why you call a timeout there and give Norristown a chance to catch their breath and get coached up. It's just, I, I really can't explain it either. It's, you know, in, in a way you may want to think, are you trying to get them to think about this more? Maybe by, you know, taking them off the field or not? Well, I certainly think that Norristown has to be considering the, they, they have to know that their, tackle, their tackling is terrible tonight. They have to know that. I don't know why you call this, this can be nothing but bad for Sadat to go on a timeout in a position like this. Because it gives Norristown a chance to rest and it gives Norristown a chance to regroup. Okay, so with 3.31 to go in the first half, here we go. Sarton on their 39. Here's the handoff here at, to Justin Powell. Short gain there, not much going on. Three-yard gain for Sarton, bring up a second and seven. 3.17 here to go in the first half. Homecoming tonight for Sarton. We had our homecoming last week at historic Roosevelt Field. Check us out at www.nasd.k12.pa.us and Comcast Channel 27. All right, two minutes, 56 seconds. Now to go in the first half. Second down and seven. Franklin, long pass, and he's almost picked off again. Why would you ever throw the ball? Run it up the middle. Norristown can't stop the run. They're picking off the passes that they can't stop the run. Run every down. Never throw. Seems like that was a pretty simple as that. Unlikely call. Judging by how well the running is, right? Well, um, I can tell you, uh, Dave, that this is a pretty interesting decision for them to, to pass. It hasn't worked for them tonight. We have a timeout on the field. There's an element to this whole business I'm just not getting, Steve. Last week, Norristown plays their finest defensive effort of the year. Tackling is precise. They give up nothing on the ground. Very uh, parsimonious, I believe, would be the SAT word. You could accurately characterize the defensive performance. This week, they're giving endless gifts to the Soderton offense of huge chunks of yards, including a complete inability to stop their fullback. This is a Jekyll and Hyde-esque tale of two teams. Okay, here's the run by Soderton, finally. Still running, no tackling. Finally brought down and we have a flag. What a run by Kramarenko, 34. We got flags down. And again, Kramarenko unleashes the speed. Huge chunks of yards. But it's coming back. It's all for naught. And Norristown has to be thanking their lucky stars that it's coming back. Because that was just a huge chunk of yards again. 
We have well, we have time. We just want to let you know that the SAT word for the game is parsimonious. Parsimonious. So if you don't know it at home, go home, pick up your dictionary, or go <laughs> online and look it up, and study it. And uh, next time we use it in future broadcasts, you'll have an idea right. of what's well, going on. <laughs> <laughs> there'll be a quiz in the vocab right, well, quiz in the second we'll half. A quiz, and it will be graded as well from uh, Mr. Uh, from Dave Vizzini here. Okay. So after that. Holding goal, Sarrington comes back. Ball on there. First chance, 45. Franklin finally passes. That pass connected. 83. That's Cody Mo Cody Muller. So there's that screen pass. Good game by Sarrington. Fooling the Norristown defense there. Put the screen pass back the other way. Norristown seemed utterly flummoxed. Flummoxed is another goal, one, Steve. Remember that one. 155 now to go in the first half. Here's the pass to Derek Brown. Brown picks up the first down. We are now seeing the machine. That is the Soderton offense on the move, and it is a fearsome sight. As, the, as Steven Tyler said, the train kept a rolling all night long, and Soderton's offense is on the move. And right, and right now, Norristown, their, their defense has to be thinking at this point. And, and in a way, that's just I guess where Southerton wants them. They want them to be thinking, what are we doing wrong at this point? They, and they're just they going to drive the thinking, ball. They want them to be doubting and they don't want them to be reacting. Norristown's a defense that's built on speed, slashing, and penetration. And Southerton has done everything in their power to confound that. And Southerton's offense is truly, truly fun to watch. Um, much to the detriment of the Norristown defense. Seems like on a couple of these plays, Norristown's defense was watching just how much fun Soderton's offense was having. All right, one minute and 53 seconds is what the, uh, on the clock. If you just join us, Steve Agavito, back with Nate Fizzini, Norristown versus Southerton. It is 14-14. We're all tied up here with Southerton on the Norristown 20. Here goes Franklin. Looks back. He finally takes the pass and that one is overthrown. And there's a flag on the play. I wholeheartedly, I, I, I don't know which way this is going. This may very well be offensive pass interference, but it just looked like they got tangled up and it did not look like a pass interference call. So we'll just see which way the chips fall on this one. Let's see, does Roby get a little shaken up there for Norristown on that play? He needs to be kneeling in the end zone. There's pass interference on the offense on that play. Okay, and well. Now for Norristown, the trainer, Dennis Flynn, comes out to tend to the injured Eagle. Franklin goes deep, um, and we talked about the fact that Really, when Soderton's put the ball up in the air, just bad things happen. All right, so Soderton will be back at the 35-yard line of Norristown on the offense of pass interference call. Danoffy exhorting his teammates to to pick it up here a little bit. Well, Donolfi's a competitor. He's, he's in it. He really is. And each and every game is he pumped up for it. And, uh... Well, Alex got that first touchdown, and Alex is always a gamer. Plays hard-nosed football, hardcore football, and he he's another throwback. He and Booker are both throwback players. They could play in any era. Tough kids who hit hard and come every play. Norris then needs to adopt their attitude if they're going to win this game here tonight. Okay, here's the run up the center. Finally, Denolfi finally gets to him. Wow. 
That was a nice run there. Seen just about anything, Steve. This Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey stuff is really crushing the Eagles tonight. All these weird handoffs and looks and all this like magic and mystery and excitement. Very bizarre. All right, one minute fifteen seconds now to go in the first half and Southerton's threatening to score again. Norristown this defense has gotta hold them. But that takes tackling. And Dave Fazzini's mentioned that enough tonight. Franklin's pass. Oh, and it's just caught but dropped. Muller had it. Here's Soderton here. Do you kick this? I think Soderton's got to kick the field goal and go into halftime with the lead. You never want to leave points on the board. That's one of the first axioms of successful coaching. Never leave points on the board. And even though this is kind of a long one for the high school game, Soderton's kickers in the pregame have shown that they can hit these from this distance. We knew that uh, Council Rock North's kickers from last week, they could pretty much take it they were super human from anywhere. Kick is up. And it's good. More than enough leg. That kid's got a kick to kick. So more than enough leg there, and you never leave points on the board. If you can go into halftime with a lead, you take it. Now, Norristown has to be thinking to themselves, where did my 14-point lead go? What turned into a 14 to nothing looked like it could have been route. Quickly turned back into Soderton's favor. Now Soderton's up 17-14 going into halftime. And if I had to attribute that to one word, I would attribute it to tackling. And I would have to agree with you on that. Sometimes the looks can be deceiving, as we saw in the early on in the first quarter. It looked like Norristown had their legs early, but now it, it, Soderton's right back, and they've taken the lead 17-14 to 14, uh, with 51.6 seconds to go in the first half. And they had Soderton shaken up. I mean, Franklin was on his heels. He threw that pick. Um, Ellis's great return set up another seven points for Norristown. And then it's almost like they selectively chose to relinquish that momentum and control. And they have to get it back. They're going to get the ball here on a kick. They're going to get the ball coming out of halftime. But they really, really, really have to capitalize on one of these drives. Well, the stats from the stat, stat sheets of Sounderton are starting to jump off the page. And for good reason. Demonstrating that their offense can get the job done. Here goes Roby. Roby has it. He's going to run towards the sideline. Roby opens up and finally taken down at the midfield. Wow. Good nice run. job by Roby. Good run by Anthony Roby. Changing field and all of Norristown's, all of we've, them can run. We've got a flag on the field. It'll be on Saturday. Personal foul, face mask. Tack on 15, Steve, and Norristown's in prime position to score here mm. with 43 seconds left to go here in the half. And boy, would that be nice with 43 point, or should I say 43 seconds to go in the first half. That would be a real momentum booster going in at halftime and give this team some confidence against a really tough offensive you've team. Be, you've got to be aggressive. You can't just run it here. You have to let Graham put it up in the air. You have to let Graham regain some of his confidence that he built up earlier with the expert connection with Denalfi and let Russell throw. All right. Graham throws and connects. That's done Mike Good, number 11. Norristown's got to get up quickly and get this play off. Clock's ticking down t under 29 seconds. All right, here's Graham. Graham throws it. High pass, and that one is way over for Anthony Roby. So that stops the clock at 20.4 seconds to go in the half. Russell Graham, just, his arm is truly the eighth wonder of the world. Well, maybe that's overstating it a bit, perhaps, but Russell does have a cannon for an arm, and he can put it anywhere on the field. But Russell has to work a little bit on his control. He had Roby there, but Roby was well covered, and he's got to learn to look off to other, other options. 
he had other options on that play, but sometimes he could be a little myopic in his focus, only focusing on one receiver. All right, here we go. Graham again passes that one, and that one's incomplete. Again, that was intended for good. And the clock again stops 15.3 seconds to go in the half. I think you'd take a shot here at the end zone. I, you know, I would too. I would definitely, if I were the coaching staff, I'd say you have to go for it here. The ball is on Sounderton's 27. Fourth down and three for Norristown. Here's Graham. Graham, play action, and he is taken right down. Monster hit there by John Holloway. Cody Muller. Yikes. Soderton's defense got to him quickly, and they really didn't, the offensive line didn't do Russ any favors. So now if you're Soderton, I guess you kneel on the ball here because of Franklin hasn't had much luck going deep. But I don't know. I don't know what you do. One more play left, you go for the old Hail Mary. Well, 7.8 seconds on the clock before halftime, and Norristown's going to have to go in and, and think, okay, what do we have to do in this second half to come back here and get some momentum and, and shut down this offense and right. they have to they have to make a change they have to make adjustments uh, to what's going on here and if they don't make those adjustments then they don't have a shot of winning this ball game that's right they, they're gonna have to make a lot of adjustments at halftime and their defense is really gonna have to think of something to stop that dive play Quinnico and Brown are running all over them it's just like they're having a field day out there and Norristown's got to think of something to stop this all right, Franklin back. He's going to air it up, and that one incomplete. Okay, three seconds left in the half. Second down and 10 for Southerton. Ball on their 38. Southerton leads it 17-14 against the Norristown Eagles. Hand off again. Rooney finds a hole. Makes his way up to That to Eric Brony and that'll and the half, and Norristown finds themselves down by three, 17-14, and it's halftime. Steve, if you're Norristown, it's a case of good news, bad news. The good news is you get out to a quick 14-0 lead, and you show that you could score against this vaunted Soderton defense. The bad news, of course, is that you completely relinquished the momentum to Soderton, and you let them run wild. Soderton's just been racking up historic yardage on the ground, and it doesn't look like Norristown's been able to make any uh, many adjustments so far to be able to stop that. If your coach Brian Kennedy and your coach E.J. Smith at halftime, you go in and you chew these guys out, and you say, look, they're not doing anything that's all that fancy. Some of the dive stuff, some of the misdirection, some of the scissors plays a little bit, you know, you might not be used to it, but you have to go in there and you have to say, you guys need to be aggressive, you guys need to hit, you guys need to wrap people up, and you guys need to put them down because you are not doing your jobs out there. And that's what it is. It's what it is right out there. It's a bunch of guys not doing their jobs who should be making these tackles and, and turning these 20-yard gains into two-yard losses or two-yard gains at the most. Okay, well, we'll find out after halftime if Norristown can make those important adjustments and come out on fire in the second half or at least try to gain some momentum in the second half. So we'll pause now for halftime. Norristown is down by three. Southerton 17, Norristown 14. We'll be back on the other side with second half action. You're watching 
NASD-TV Varsity Football Action on NASD-TV Channel 27.